Okay, we finally got that working. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kate now. Thanks, Peter. All right, I'm gonna jump right in, going over to PubMed, and if you have another browser, you can open up PubMed and follow right along. To search for a gene in PubMed, enter the symbol or the name into the search box. We'll search ANC1. For many genes, the PubMed gene sensor will kick in, and a box will appear at the top of your results, linking you to the relevant records in the gene database. You will also see a link at the top to retrieve PubMed records for articles about this gene. This link is created by gene RIFs, or reference into function, which I'll explain in a minute. The next main link takes you to the record in the gene database for the human gene. Because we're NIH, we focus on information about humans. So the gene database primarily represents genes in humans and some model organism species. Follow the link to the specific species of interest. In this example, we'll stick with humans, so I'll use the main link. Consider the gene database record your genes homepage. This is where we'd like you to start any exploration of a gene in the NCBI databases, including explorations of the literature. In the right column of the gene record, under related information, you'll find links back to PubMed. Use these links to find literature about a gene. Hovering your mouse over a link will open an explanation for each. And I'll highlight two. The link labeled PubMed will retrieve articles selected by NLM curators and generated from external databases. And again, a full explanation is there. The link labeled GeneRIF for reference into function retrieves articles that focus on the function of a gene. These articles are selected by NLM staff, but also volunteer collaborators, maybe you. When we identify articles that inform our understanding of gene function, we extract relevant excerpts from these articles discussing the function of the gene. And we call these gene RIFs and we include them in the gene database record below. You can help with this. You can submit your own gene RIF. If you have published or know about an article that describes the function of a gene and it is not yet included in this gene RIF section of a gene record, please participate. You can follow this link here, and I'll also put a link in the chat box to more information and instructions on how to participate in this crowdsourcing project. So again, going back to the gene record for ANC1 and Homo sapiens, these links under related information from the gene database to PubMed will lead you to highly relevant literature about the gene. And this is the main point I wanna to make today. Using the gene database to link back to PubMed will retrieve the most relevant current articles referenced in PubMed about a gene. If for some reason the gene sensor isn't activated when you search PubMed, search the gene database directly. And I'm gonna go back to PubMed to clarify how to get here. Let's say we tried the search APOO in PubMed. No gene sensor. Some terms are too ambiguous to trigger the gene sensor. So I'll select the gene database from the database selection menu in the upper left and search the gene name or symbol in the gene database. And here I can select the gene record for my species. And from the full gene database record, I can use those links back to PubMed to retrieve citations from the literature. For a more comprehensive search of the literature, you will need to search PubMed directly. Articles about a gene are indexed using the name of the resultant protein with the subheading genetics. To go back to my first example, if I search for the protein ANC1 and genetics, and maybe add human to be more specific, I'll get the PubMed results, and just for fun, um, note that I'm sorting by relevance. By default, your sort is by most recent, but you can use this menu to select relevance. And I'd like to show you why I got pretty good results for this search by looking at the first record.
Scrolling down to the mesh terms that describe the article, you can see the indexing that's been applied. And you'll see that it is indexed with the term Ankerin's genetics. And under substances, you can see that Ank1 protein human. So understanding this indexing can improve your searching. If you'd like to search using gene names or symbols that might appear in the title or abstract, be aware that many genes have had more than one name over time, so you may need to search using synonyms. The gene database includes a wide range of synonyms. For example, if I search for TP53 in the gene database, Selecting that human record, I can see that it has several synonyms, including a very common synonym of P53. So it's TP53 and 50, P53 and these other synonyms. Another useful reference to find synonyms is genenames.org, which happens to be linked right here from this gene record. So I'm going to follow this link to grab that URL to share with you in the chat box. Again, to find the decidedly relevant literature, I would use the links from the TP53 record in the gene database. But to retrieve all potentially relevant literature, for example, to create a saved search and be alerted to anything new in PubMed with any of these synonyms, I could construct a search for all of these synonyms using an OR statement. So my PubMed search might be something like, And you can see from the results that I'm getting quite a few. And I should expect false hits from this more comprehensive search. Part of the problem, which I alluded to earlier when I was talking about the gene sensor, is that many gene symbols are not uniquely identifiable. For example, COX-2 might be cyclooxygenase 2 or cytochrome C oxidase. So not only has it been used to describe different genes, it also has different meanings in the more general medical vocabulary. And this is why controlled vocabulary systems are so important and why searching the literature that, been ha that has been described by indexers is easier than searching the non-indexed literature. What would make our databases function even better is if scientists like you would use gene IDs in your publications. And I'm going to show you an example here. So take a look at this abstract, and you can see that not only did they put the gene ID, the uniquely identifiable gene ID, in the article, it's right in the abstract. So including gene IDs in your publications allows us to much more easily link from your publications to gene information and vice versa. And I'll put a link in the chat box for some background and rationale, and actually a very entertaining article, on linking uh, between articles and gene databases. So to review the four points I've made today, first, use the links from the gene database to search PubMed for relevant literature about a gene. I'll go to the gene database homepage as a visual cue to remind you of that. Secondly, our indexers describe genes by the protein, so you can use the protein terms and the word genetics for searching PubMed. Third, if you need to search comprehensively, you'll need to construct a search for the synonyms used to describe a gene and expect to work through false hits. Fourth, help us help you. You can improve knowledge about genes by using gene IDs in your publications and by submitting those gene RIFs there's a link right here under Gene Tools on the Gene Database homepage when you are aware of literature describing the function of a gene. So I guess we can take some questions. So one question we have, the meaning of relevance in PubMed sorting, is that documented anywhere? And how, does, how is it done? I'm going to have Kathy Knees, who's joined us, to answer that question here. 
So the PubMed online help um, includes information about relevant sorting. So if we go back to PubMed and choose the help information, I believe the in the appendix I have some information about computation of weighted relevance order in PubMed. So within the, the online help, there's information about general information about sorting, and then there is specific information about relevance weighting in PubMed. Okay, I think we need to wrap up because we're out of time. If there are any questions in the questions pod that we didn't get to, we'll answer those in a Q&A document that we're going to put up on the uh, FTP site. And let me just, before we go, I'll just remind you of a few things. Here are some uh, links to help documentation. So the PubMed help link there and the gene help link. Remember when I put links in slides like this, the NCBI is the NCBI homepage URL. Um, and remind you that we have an NCBI YouTube channel. You can visit that for tutorial videos as well as recordings of these webinars. And there are uh, two help desks that are involved in the presentation today. The PubMed help desk is who you should write to for questions about PubMed itself. We're sort of on the border between PubMed and NCBI molecular biology resources today. So the info address is up there as well. So and if you have any questions about this webinar or anything about our webinars in general, you can write, write to that webinar's email address. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. Thanks for coming.